Sergeant Saunders and I have been called back to division for debriefing. All platoon orders stand, so get some rest. Thank you, sir. Saunders. Sergeant. Yes. Come on. Move over. I'll drive. Hey, Sarge. I hear there's a Limey Hospital near division. Bring back a couple of nurses, will you? And no male nurses. Ihr Hauptziel wird die Entladung entlang der Kürze sein. Hier. Jeder Flugzeugkommandeur wird sein eigenes Ziel aussuchen. Flugzeug Nummer 3 wird zwei Bomben abwerfen. Hier. Auf das Dorf Lore. Meine Herren, Ihr alternierendes Ziel ist Lore. Combat. A Selmer production. Combat. Starring Rick Jason. Vic Morrow. And guest stars, Alex Davion and Ellen Willard. Pawn? Resign. Okay, Lieutenant. You can park anywhere inside. Do you know where we can get a decent meal and a couple of drinks around here? The cave, right down the street. You want to go? A bad sleep in a soft bed is all I want. Well, the third building on your right. Ask for Sergeant Oldworth. He'll fix you up. Thanks. And uh, don't wake me up unless it's absolutely necessary. We play the same thing over and over again. Oui, la même chanson. Avez-vous une cigarette? Merci. Allez viens toi. Allez viens toi. Bonsoir, Monsieur Désir. Je ne parle. Did you have anything to eat? Pardon? To eat? Ah, mais certainement, Monsieur Herouge. No, I don't want any wine. I. I'm afraid you need a little help, Lieutenant. Well, thanks. Before I starve to death. Emile. Madame. Monsieur Affin. Pas soif. Ah bon? Bon pain? What would you like? What have they got? Bread and cheese only, I'm afraid. I'll have some of both. Have some wine, too. Emile's really proud of it. You'll get more bread and cheese if you do. You're the doctor. Nurse. Aussi de vin, s'il vous plaît. Bien, madame. Alors, pain, fromage et vin. Bien, madame. Uh, two glasses. Uh, uh, deux. No, thanks. I'm waiting for someone. Sorry. Oh. Well, thanks for helping, nurse. You're welcome, Lieutenant. Le fromage, et voici la spécialité de la maison, le rouge. Nurse. Ben, fromage. What do I do now? Not approval wisely. Wisely? I'm only a second lieutenant. Bon appétit, madame. No, no, nothing for me. If you don't, you'll take back the cheese and bread. Oh, all right. Yes. 
No, don't tell me. Here's to our wives and sweethearts. May they never meet. <laughs> no, I was trying to remember one that a Swedish fellow in my platoon taught me. Minsko a la Volka Flikasko. Which means? Here's to me. And here's to all the pretty girls. That's very nice, isn't it? David. Bonsoir, monsieur. Oh, how are you, David? Fine. Just, uh, just fine, thank you. I've been waiting for you. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut vous servir, monsieur? Aren't you going to introduce us? Well, we just met a few minutes ago. I... I don't even know the lieutenant's name. That's odd. Every Yank I've ever heard of told a girl his name, where he came from, and how fast he was going to win the war for us all in the first 20 seconds. Oh, David, please. I don't speak French. And the lady was kind enough to help me order from the proprietor. Now, why don't we just let it go at that? Tout le monde, vite, 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 tout le monde à la cave. Allez, allez. All right, everybody off the street. Allez ici, allez ici, monsieur. Voilà, voilà, voilà. Allez, 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 allez. Hey, don't worry, I'm right behind you. David, are you just going to stand there? Let's go. Why? That wine cellar's no bump shelter or hit up here will be just as bad down there. What about a near miss up here? You can get hit by glass or flying debris. And go below, both of you. Oh, David, come on. Come on, let's go. Hello, vous venez, oui? Les animaux, la guerre n'existe pas. Allez, viens, mon beau. Viens. They don't sound too close. Bite your tongue. What's with the old lieutenant? Doesn't he know about Bond? Yes. He knows about them. He knows too much about bombs. I keep forgetting the English have had this war a little longer than we have. It's only been five years. But it seems as if we've always been at war. How long have you been at this? Mm. I went into training in 1941. And the lieutenant? He's been at it since the beginning, without rest. I think he needs one. Or was he born with that chip on his shoulder? Oh, it's a long story. He wasn't like this before, before Tony was killed. Who was Tony? His chum. They were in the same outfit together. Tony was killed six months ago. A week later, David walked out on me. I haven't seen him since. How did you meet tonight? I ran into a chap who knows him. Asked him to tell David I was stationed at hospital here. 
By the way, I'm Lieutenant Hanley. Anne Farrell. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to have met you. Goodbye, Lieutenant. You're a good listener. Yes, this is Sal Bush. dinner around here? Oh, sure. For a carton of cigarettes. Number four, Rue de Berry. Right down the street from Division. Thanks. That, I fear, young lady, is it? Just as well. You remember me and a third drink. I recite poetry. Limericks, as I recall it. You're not supposed to recall. Not those. <laughs> It is good to see you again. Anne, you've been in this village for a while. Where can we get some more whiskey? I don't think you can. I'm told even the Americans stop trying. Well, then I'm sure it's impossible. David, why are you so peevish about the Americans? They talk big, for one thing. And they die big. Poetry. I don't think you really hate the Americans at all. I think you're just bitter. You've got the taste of ashes in your mouth. What do you expect, Dr. Freud? Don't leave me. Not like the last time. Did I? Hmm. Yes, I did. Excuse me for that, darling. Why did you walk out on me? Because I didn't want to marry you. Who said you had to? Your voice, your eyes, your look. Every kiss, every caress, every whisper in the dark. And what were you saying to me? <laughs> oh, I was young and impetuous and in love, and uh, I suspect I was saying the same things. But that was ages ago, last winter. Well, then, darling. It isn't the same thing. How much time do you think I have left now? How much now? All you want. You're long overdue for leave. Why don't you take one? Because Tony's dead. No. Because 105 Tonys are dead. Because I'm the only man in our original group who's still alive and in one piece. Then why don't they let you do something else? In your line, they're either calm officers or dead ones, and nothing in between. You're drawn taut as a bow. Don't you think I don't know it? That's why I'm here in law. I'm on my way back to London. Dear David, why didn't you say because that? Because it doesn't the first change place. a thing. I'll be back taut as a bow in a month. Is that what you came to tell me tonight? Yes. Stop waiting. There's nothing to wait for. Not a thing in the world. Et voilà, ça recommence. 
Allez, viens, toi. Monsieur Dame, s'il vous plaît. Ah, on va bien, on va bien. Le café, bien, S'il vous plaît. Go on. Not without you. And go on. No. What is it? It sounded like an unexploded bomb. A dud? I don't know. David, the bomb isn't your worry. You said yourself you're on leave. That's a mere technicality. How many bomb disposal officers do you think they are in this area? Take care of the bomb. No, there's only a division command post and an anti-aircraft unit here. Now, stop worrying. There's no reason for me to defuse the bomb. There are no factories or big gun emplacements around. I'll just explode the bomb where it sits. Can't someone else do that? Not as neatly. All this damage and it didn't even go off. No. All this did was make a little hole in the roof. The rest of the damage was made by an explosion nearby. May I borrow your torch, Major? I'm a bomb disposal officer. Lieutenant David Woodman. Sure, Lieutenant. Sorry it hit the church, Father. We're lucky it's a dud. Je suis désolé, je ne parle pas l'anglais. It's not a dud. It's a time bomb. Oh, great. What can you do about it, Lieutenant? I suggest that we clear the area and blow the bomb up ourselves. And destroy the church? I'm afraid so. Padre? Has to be done. Je suis désolé, je ne comprends pas l'anglais. I thought you fellas were trained to defuse these bombs. Major, besides the time fuse, there's also an anti-disturbance fuse in this bomb. Any sharp jar or vibration could set it off. I don't think my chances would be very good. Mon père, cette bombe peut détonner à tout instant. Je peux essayer de la désamorcer, mais je ne pense pas avoir beaucoup de chance. La chose la plus sensée serait la faire exploser, mais cela veut dire la destruction de votre église. 
nous pourrons toujours construire une autre église. Une vie humaine est plus sacrée que toutes les églises du monde. Merci, mon père. Vous feriez mieux de sortir tout ce que vous pouvez maintenant. Mais certainement. Et merci. What did he say? He said that one life is worth more than this building. And since that life might be mine, I'm inclined to agree. So do I. What do you need? First, I want this area cleared for 500 yards. And I want all traffic going through the area stopped. All traffic, Major. Right. Corporal? You bet, sir. Right away. I want two blocks of TNT, two feet of safety fuse, and some friction tape. And the sooner the better, Major. It's on the way. Can you move? You can get this telegraph pole off me. What are you doing here? I was in the street when the second raid hit. This looked like as good a place as any. Move your legs. Uh, it's the left one. I, I think it's broken. What have you got in mind, Lieutenant? I'm a bomb disposal officer. Then why don't you get a crane and get this thing off me? See that? I guess I'm luckier than I think. Not so lucky. It's a time bomb. Then let's get going. It's also got an anti-disturbance fuse in it. Oh. So I can't bring a crane in here to... Lift this beam, or take a chance of the cross beams falling. And I can't bring ten men in here to shore everything up, while the time fuse sets the bomb off. And I can't explode the bomb because... Just what can you do, Lieutenant? <laughs> No truck, no jeep, no. nothing past this point. Got yeah, it? yeah. Is he at the bomb now, the limey? No, he's at the cafe. I just loaded his tools there for him. Boy, I wouldn't want his job. Hey! I don't want anyone in here, didn't they tell you? Let me help you, David. I can take care of the American. I'm a nurse. Please, There's David. There's nothing you can do to help except clear out of here. Take her out, please, Major. No, David. Now! It's a time bob, remember? Let's go, miss. Be so careful, David. That's the name of the game, isn't it? You got it? 
got everything you need? You got the morphine syrup from the doctors? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Luck, Scott. Nothing to do with it, Major. Sleep, huh? No thanks. Don't be foolish. Are you crazy? Look, mister, you're gonna need all the help you can get right now, morally and any other way it comes. And I'm no good to you asleep. What the devil help are you awake? Well, calling me names ought to help you relax. You're all cocky, aren't you? That's one. See how good it feels? all the facts we can, huh? Facts? Such as? The bomb. You can't handle it. You're pooped out, wrung dry, tied in a thousand knots inside and out. Who told you that? Anne? She didn't have to. I can see it. You walk, talk, and think like a man who's one inch away from exploding himself. Now, why don't you play it safe, Lieutenant? Play it smart. Send for somebody who's in better shape. From where? London? That bomb's not going to wait to go off, you know. Now, just keep quiet, Lieutenant. And then we get to work. stiff. You know, sometimes it helps to keep gabbing. Sometimes? Do you know anything about German bombs? How they work? No. But <laughs> this seems like a good time to learn. Well, for one thing, the two fuses, the gadgets in these two side pockets, are armed electrically. Armed to go off on impact? Yes. If the bomb is designed to go off on impact in the first place, sometimes they aren't. Why not? Many reasons. The Germans call it Schrechlichkeit. It means frightfulness. Time bombs make people jumpy. Either they have to stay cooped up in the shelter until the bomb goes off. That could be days. Or they go back to work, knowing that the bomb could go off any hour, any minute. Any second. About the fuses, you said they're armed electrically. Yes. When the bomb falls away from the plane, the heads of the fuses come into contact with charged wires. From then on, Bertha here is in business. Hey, what's going on? Why are, you, why are you evacuating the place? There's a time bomb in the church. Some British bomb disposal officer is going to try and take it apart before it goes. You'll have to move on, Sarge. Don't worry. Say, where's that um, 
place that second lieutenant went to? No, the cave. That's right down the street. You can't miss it. Cave, huh? This is the anti-disturbance fuse. It stops you from picking up the bomb and carting it away somewhere in the open to explode it. work. I said, how does the fuse work? There's a sensitive coiled spring inserted within, but not quite touching. A larger, equally sensitive coiled spring. When they vibrate enough to touch one another, A sudden movement to the bomb, an explosion nearby, even the rumble of a passing truck. Contact is made. The bomb goes off. How oh, nice. What kept it from going off when it smashed into here? There's a gadget in the fuse, a resistor. that stops the electrical charge from going through to the coil springs until long after the bomb has come to rest. Happy days. This is the time fuse. Under that is the withdrawal fuse. A third fuse? A third fuse. Remove the time fuse above, and you set off the anti-withdrawal fuse below. And the bomb. The insurance fuse? Yes. Except that we have a special tool to take out both the time fuse and the anti-withdrawal fuse together. Did you bring one with you? Yes. Have you ever used it? In school, on a dummy bomb. How'd you score? Flying colors, 100%. Paper thin space between the bomb pocket and the two fuses. The idea is to slip the cylinder into the space, Tighten down. Tightly. And then slowly, ever so carefully, 
bring out both the fuses together. Well, I... I guess we might as well give it a whirl, huh? I suppose we might. Lieutenant, my leg's kicking up. I could use a cigarette. You think I'm a coward, don't you? No. I think you think that people will call you a coward if you walk out of here. You'd be right. Why? I don't call an infantryman a coward because he stops charging when his gun is shot out of his hands. That's different. He needs a gun for his kind of war. You need steady nerves for yours. What are you trying to do? Talk me into walking out of here? Makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, you've got to make up your mind either to go that way out the door or that way. You admit it beats just standing around. You've got to make up your mind one way or the other. Sans doute. Comme tout le monde, j'ai peur. Et comme tout le monde aussi, on s'y habitue. Et le plus triste, c'est qu'à compter d'aujourd'hui, on n'a même plus d'église pour dire la messe. nearby set this one off? Yes. Unless the anti-disturbance fuses out. Well, what's it going to be, Lieutenant?
didn't go off, did it? No. No, I don't think so. Is this the only saloon in town? Just about. I came up here with my platoon leader. I'd sure like to find him before this whole town gets bombed out. Lieutenant. Say, how about lighting that cigarette for me now? You know, you still have a, a time fuse to get out of that bomb. What do you say we get with it? What's the matter with you? You think bomb disposal people are the only ones who get killed in this war? A funny thing, wouldn't it, Lieutenant? If you ended up by setting my life? Not me, Lieutenant. I just talked about it. Lieutenant, how can I ever begin to, to, uh... That crane would be handy, Lieutenant. I'm getting a crick in my neck. Right away. Father, what are you doing here? Je ne comprends pas. Vous n'aurez pas dû rester ici. Et où aurais-je pu aller? David! It's all right. David. It's all over. You don't have to worry anymore. You better look after the lieutenant. I'll go and see if I can get a doctor. All right. Anne? Yes? I... Uh, L'anglais est très courageux. Oui, je sais. Je les ai entendus parler. Je n'ai pas compris, mais je sais que l'anglais a encouragé l'Américain pendant toute cette épreuve. What did he say? He said he didn't understand what you were saying. But David talked to you all the time and kept your spirits up. That's right, he saved my life. Nurse, I, I think I could use a shot of morphine now. Of course. How's he doing, nurse? I'm going to get him some morphine. Doctor's on his way.
Hi, Lieutenant. I didn't know it was you pinned in here. I've been all over town looking for you. You hurt bad? I'm all right. You got any sleep, Saunders? <laughs> Are you kidding? I get more rest up at the front. Bring a crane in from the engineers. Won't be long now, Lieutenant. Thanks, Major. You might as well take off now, Saunders. Oh, no, I couldn't do that, Lieutenant. I'm going to stay right here till the medics come. Kind of keep an eye on things. What you better do is try to get some rest, you know. Try to get some rest and sleep. That's what you need, Lieutenant. Some sleep. Beautiful. 